Hello again, whiskey friends. Thanks for joining me today, everybody. And if this is your first time here, let me just give you a quick clue in on what we do on Tuesdays. We get people that submit questions to us, and I like to answer them in this format. And today's question I thought was interesting because, I mean, you can see the cabinet behind me. I was asked if I am getting tired of sourced whiskey in general. Am I getting tired of all these brands? Am I getting tired of seeing these brands? Am I getting tired of seeing so many different brands with MGP, with Barton, with all of these other distilleries and then slapping their own label on it? So I'm going to tackle that question and take it at a few different angles for today's video. So thanks for joining me, everybody. Let's kick off the show. So for today's whiskey discussion was, am I getting tired of sourced whiskeys? Hmm. I know a lot of people are getting tired of them. I know there's a lot of fatigue going on out there. I think one of the reasons that the fatigue tends to set in is that when a sourced whiskey first comes out, they are usually hitting with their best barrels. They are usually hitting with their lowest prices. And it creates a situation where a brand can create a whole lot of buzz around the industry and around the hobby. And then when it takes off, the prices go up. And typically the age statements start coming down as they get hard. It's harder and harder for them to maintain the barrels that they have. So I understand some of the frustration of that, because if you are always on the back end of that trend, you were always enjoying the ghost of something or the shadow of something versus the thing that people were hyping up all along. And I think that's what creates a little bit of a problem with the source whiskey. I also think when you go into a store such as the party source here in northern Kentucky and literally half of the bourbon section is sourced, it's MGP. And it's like all these labels and it's like, what do I buy? What are the age statements? What are all these prices? What am I doing here? It does add a whole lot of confusion. So what I'm going to drink today as we talk about this a bit more is something similar on the topic here, but I enjoy this one quite a bit. So if you're in our Patreon, you know, I just did a little review of this one and I'll keep that for there, but it's brands like this that I do like finding. But I think it is. I think that's the thing that's setting fatigue in. It's a combination of what are all these brands? What am I supposed to pay attention to? It's overwhelming. Or, man, I finally got my hands on this thing that everyone's been hyping for the last two to three years, and it was just okay. You know, I, I hate to say it. I think some of the times this happens with Smoke Wagon. You know, some of the Smoke Wagon batches of Uncut Unfiltered, when we're talking about, say, the first 30 batches that came out, they were some special stuff. And then the batches came out more rapidly and not to say that the quality came down, but maybe just the specialness of it came down. Uh, the, the care in each batch, maybe, but something's different about that brand than it was before, but now it's everywhere and good for them mass producing that thing. And then we're just going to have a whole lot of more people doing what they're about to do here because of this sell with Penelope with Penelope selling to MGP and with MGP, somewhat been unable to establish their brands, maybe arguably outside of Remus. I can see some of these other brands getting gobbled up by MGP and they'll, they'll release it under their own umbrella more and more. Essentially let somebody else do the legwork on all the marketing and then they'll step in and get paid, which is only going to encourage other brands to do the exact same thing. So if you are frustrated with that scene right now, I think it's probably going to get worse after what happened with Penelope. You know, play this game for five years and let's see what happens. So I am not tired of sourced whiskeys. I mean, the cabinet behind me here 
is essentially all source whiskeys. I mean, these are all mostly MGPs as we kind of go through here, except for a few that stick out. You, know, you got the four roses here, you got the beam, but for the most part, this is all MGP and all Barton and all sourced. My other cabinet over here kind of has more of the legacy distilleries, the, the makers and the Buffalo Trace and the Wild Turkey, but this one is pretty much the sourced cabinet. And I am perfectly fine finding source whiskeys and buying them as long as they are good and they live up to the price. So I'm not tired of sourced whiskeys. What I am getting tired of is the inconsistency in prices and the mental math I have to do sometimes in order to justify these prices. I mean, let's take an extreme here and we'll just go through this real quickly. Why don't we start with something like Old Scout picks? MGP, six to seven years old, typically, these picks, I find it routinely for $52. $52 MGP. We can go through other brands. OKI, six years, cost $80. National Barrel Company, cost anywhere between $80, $100, $120 for six-year MGP. This Hershey, which I love, nine-year MGP, $90. And then you get into something like Barrel King, $130. I mean, it just adds up, and it's just like, what am I paying for here when if I go back to that first bottle I picked up? I mean, this old Scout was $52. So it's what's, what's the difference between these? And even if there is some sort of economic difference on how the company got these casts in the first place. And, you know, they're just trying to make sure that they can make profit off of these things, depending on what their expenditures are. Hey, that's all good. That's how business works. But for me as a consumer, especially when I'm staring at a $52, six to seven year old scout, and then I'm staring at 10 other brands that are six year MGP and they cost 20, 30, $40 more. I mean, how am I supposed to process that? And I know what I'm looking at, right? I think that goes back to that frustrating thing I said before with all these labels. You know, I somewhat know how to navigate this, or at least if I am going to pay up, it's going to be because I know who picked the barrel typically versus doing it at just some random store. You know, if I'm just at some random store and I'm picking a barrel for the weekend, I'm just going for the old scout. But if I know whose group I'm in and I know who picked the bottle, I tend to, yes, pay up. I just showed you all the bottles I paid up for. So obviously I do pay up for them. But I do find the whole mental math behind this whole thing pretty darn crazy. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. Even the bottle I just showed you is the same exact thing as so many other labels and $30, $40, $50 cheaper when it comes to what I'm sipping on here. So that's the part of it that doesn't make sense to me and sometimes makes me annoyed. At the same time, I have been playing this MGP game now for five, six years, and it has always been a game of knowing who has the hot hand while they have it. And that's what it is about, you know, getting these sourced whiskeys. I think a great example of that would be recently the craze for these lucky sevens. Now these were absolutely unbelievable. Hopefully you got to try some of these while their barrels were still plentiful. I don't think we're going to see too many of these, at least not at the same range that we used to. Cause once again, they only have so many barrels to go around. So when they are doing barrel pick after barrel pick after barrel pick of 14, 15 year old stuff, it's only going to go so far, but they established the brand of lucky seven that's the most important thing. And don't be surprised if you see lucky proprietor, you know, 10s and 12 years and things like that after they reestablish the barrels. Or at this point, they'll just spin them off into other labels anyway. They've been doing a great job at that. What is really confusing, too, about something like Lucky 7 is the fact that when it does come to 1792 and Barton's own brands and labels, their best stuff is never on their own labels. Yeah, that part of it never makes sense to me. I mean, the MGP side of it, fine. You know, they haven't been doing a very good job at establishing their own brands. They're going out there and they're buying brands. 
makes sense for them. But something like 1792, you think that's a pretty darn established brand. You know, the only thing that I can compare it to here, the age 12 year, that's proof down to what? 49, 48.3. I mean, what have I been enjoying for years now? The Calumet 14, the Calumet 15, the Calumet 16, the Sam Houston 14s, the Sam Houston 15s, the Lucky 7 14s, the Lucky 7 15s. Amazing, amazing pours. None of it under Barton's own labels. All of it sourced. So if you want to enjoy some of the special stuff that Barton can offer, the only way you can get it is as a sourced whiskey on somebody else's label. You just have to do the legwork to research the labels and get in front of the wave rather than behind the wave. Because once again, once the wave is over, when it comes to who has these hot hands on the source whiskey at any given time, you're going to be chasing ghosts thereafter, or you're going to be paying up on secondary if you end up getting the FOMO bug. So I guess that's where I'm at on this particular topic. Am I worried about brand sourcing whiskey? Am I tired of it? Am I exhausted by it? I'm not. I mean, that's just part of the hunt for me. I'm confused by the prices sometimes, but once again, it's up to me to pick my own criteria of what I'm willing to spend on something and to decide if the value proposition between a $52 old Scout that's six years old matches up to a $130 Barrel King that's six years old, but also typically finished in another cast, by the way. So just to be fair. So there are expenses there. But that's weird, though, right? Like, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of difference there. But I'd rather have two of these, even three of these, or one of those. Whew. And some of these can be pretty darn special single barrels. I mean, once again, single barrel to single barrel, man, these old scouts can be just as good as anything else. So that part of it's crazy. And then what am I actually paying for when that happens? I mean, it has to be the middleman and how they got the barrels and all that type of thing. At least I hope to give people the benefit of the doubt. But that's where I'm going to end it on this particular topic. Am I tired of the source bourbon, source whiskeys? No, nah, that's just part of the game for me. So I am fine with it as long as hopefully they continue to be transparent about sources, about ages. At least tell me that if you're going to charge up for the whiskey. You know, Some of the brands don't always give me even the ages, and that starts rubbing me the wrong way too. I like to know what I'm drinking as much as I can. So just be transparent. Well, thank you for joining me today, whiskey friends. I would love to hear what you have to say on this particular topic in the comments. Are you tired of source whiskey? How have you been navigating it? Have you given up on it entirely? Are you still hunting different MGPs, different Bartons? What's your point of view? Well, thanks for joining me today, everybody. I'll catch you next week. Goodbye, whiskey friends. Jeff, just be friends with me. But you have these whiskey friends. And you say hello again. Oh, Jeffrey, you should just be friends with me. But you have these whiskey friends. And you say hello again. Oh, Jeffrey, you. So just be friends with me But you have these whiskey friends And you say hello again